Let's round out our little tour of lighting tools and talk about mesh lights. Those are essentially surfaces, geometry in your 3D viewport that have a shader on them that emits light. So that's kind of cool. So instead, a shader is the thing that makes an object look gray and flat and dull or blue and shiny like my sphere, or we can put a texture on it or whatnot. But the shader can also describe that an object is supposed to emit light. And then it'll behave much like the spotlight or the point light geometry geometry that I've shown you in the previous video. Let's take a look at it. My assistant is of course Dazelle still and she is still set up with the lights that we've set up in the previous video and I might just go and not so much get rid of it but make them invisible and that means they won't interfere with the light that we're going to set up here. Let me show you how that works. If I go and switch this back into iRay and then have a look at my scene tab here I can first of all take the environment intensity down here back to zero so we don't have that then we have this spotlight here and if i click that little eyeball icon then it'll be made invisible and it'll also no longer partake in actually creating light in the viewport so i'll do that to all of these guys this one and the one at the back they're now all invisible and all we have is a black lady so there's nothing that emits light anymore neither the environment light or any of the scene lights which is exactly what we want I'll go back into filament just because that's easier for me to navigate around. And for this example, I'm going to go and create a primitive. Create new primitive. In my case, it's going to be a plane. Hit accept in the default position, which is here. And I'll go and bring that forward. And I'm going to go and imagine this is going to be a softbox that a photographer uses. So I'll go and rotate it around like this. It doesn't have to be super precise, but yeah, if we can make it precise, head over to the parameters tab under rotation, X rotation. Let's make it minus 90 precisely. And then I'll go and move it maybe over here. Rotate it slightly at an angle like this and I'll go and bring it up somewhat so that it's on the height of my model here like so now this is just a gray plane I'll go and switch this back into iRay because mesh lights cannot be previewed in the texture shaded viewport or the filament viewport so I'm going to have to go do this in iRay but the advantage of a mesh light is that it's very easy for me to position because I can just go and move it into place like I just did now, with my plane selected, I can head over to the Surfaces tab. On the Surfaces tab, with my plane selected, I have one surface that's called Default, by default. <laughs> and that is where I can find the default material that's been applied here. We don't have to worry about any of these channels except for the emissions channel. And that's the one that will tell iRay, hey, this thing needs to be lit up. If that's set to black, then it won't emit any light. But if it's set to any other color than black, it will create that color and shine it into my viewport. I'm going to use white for this. So click into this little color picker pops up. I'm going to pick white from here. Hit OK. And then I can see that, well, something appears to be happening in the viewport, but it's not bright enough to illuminate our model. I mean, I can see a little bit of something. I can see that this is now light gray instead of black, and I can just about see a shadow here, a uh, shadowy figure happening here. But we need more intensity. And the values are very similar to those that we've seen on the parameters tab with the lights, yet they are different. So here at the bottom we have the luminance and we also have a luminance unit which is candles per square meters. If we leave that at the default the luminance value here needs to be set up to something extremely high for the light to be strong enough to emit something that can illuminate our model. So if I go and set this to I don't know maybe a million like that. Let's test that out. Then uh, some light is creeping in here. And I can see that my figure is now illuminated from my plane, which is nice. And also I can see that the light is very soft. So that's the other advantage of mesh lights. You can create really nice and soft lighting effects here. And that's really all there's to it. You can change the light color. So if I wanted to make that something, I don't know, something orange, I can pick that and then this is going to emit something orange, which is neat. Same caution applies as before. Strong colors make a very, very strong effect. So be mindful of that. If you wanted to have the light a tint, then move into this area at the bottom that leaves it mainly white and just gives it a hint of color. I'm going to go and leave it just completely white for now. 
You also have the emission color temperature up here that we discussed before. Once again, with white light, the same applies as before. If I set this to 4000, then the whole color temperature is going to be dimmed down. So things appear a little bit orange. Or if you go the other way past 6500 to something like 8000, then that gets into the cooler area, into the cooler tone. You also have the two sided light. So that's on by default. That means the light will be emitted along the surface normals as well as the other side. If you switch that off, then the other side of the emissive surface does not emit light. So that's now black, whereas this one is white. That's the normals here. And this one is the other side of that. I personally don't use the default value of candles per square meters. I set this to watts because that is something that I understand more easily. And then I have a smaller number to adjust here. So that makes my life a little bit less cumbersome. So if we go and switch this to the default of 1500 here, and then I can just go and adjust the wattage, then I don't need to have quite that many zeros. That just makes my life easier. So I'm thinking the default is 15. If I set this to 100, then I already see that a little bit of light's coming out if I don't, if I want to have that a bit stronger i'll just make it 500 and you know that gets me into the correct realm there so if i wanted something like a really soft fashion light i would go and set this up like so and then go and maybe copy my plane to the other side so edit duplicate and then i have that other plane and as i said it i find it easier to adjust these things into position in the filament viewport but the trouble is that of course filament doesn't support these mesh lights but it's easier for me to adjust these things like so i don't have to make them quite that large i can make them thinner strips and then if i do this switch back to iray then i'll see that i have a really soft fashion light that accentuates the clothing well maybe it's a little bit bright here so let's let's tone that down values are also duplicated so maybe this probably 200 is enough and then on the other softbox we can go and correct that as well on the emission shader. So that's really all there's to know about mesh lights. You create a primitive, you select the surface of any object that is in your scene, could be a primitive, could be something like a scene element that's already pre-built, could be custom geometry. Then you head over to the emissions channel and set that to a color anything other than black and that will go and create your effect. So if you wanted to create a portrait like that, we have these beautiful catch lights here which look exactly like, you know, the front cover of Vogue now and it's really really easy and you didn't have to buy another product all you have to do is create a primitive and then slap a value on this that's kind of nice oh there is one thing that is often a problem with mesh lights and that is what happens if you want to make them invisible like on the parametric lights that we had on the scene lights we had that little tick box that just said would you like for the emitter to be rendered or not and if you set that to no then the emitter is invisible but the light itself is still here if you use mesh lights like these they're also sometimes known as ghost lights because they're kind of not really in the scene type thing we can make it happen but it's a little bit weird and cumbersome and it's just something to be aware of let me show you how it works so a classic example is if i zoom out here of a dolly out and i see this big light that is now occluding half my figure so i can't really have that happen so that's plane number two i'll go and select it and it's not actually on the emission tab it is on the geometry tab so remember this is geometry now and i can go and use this to use the cutout opacity value and set that to anything other than one much like we learned before, one means this thing is completely opaque, zero means it's completely transparent or invisible. And notice what happens if I do make it invisible, I don't get to see the effect of that light anymore. So that's a bit of a problem. If I turn it to zero, it's completely not there. But if I set it to something like 0 0.00001, I think it's five zeros or even six zeros, then a tiny bit of this yeah it's actually you can you can go one more zero there if you wanted to I'll, I'll leave it like this but you can just go and you know move that zero around so zero and then do that that's as invisible as possible so it's still visible but it's invisible enough that the camera isn't going to pick it up anymore 
Tragically, however, the light value is also going to be severely reduced. So you're going to have to compensate for that. And that's back on the emissions tab. But that's OK. We can do that. We can either do this on the luminance tab or we can do that on the wattage tab. So in my case, I'm going to just go and add two zeros to this and see what happens. And that is not quite enough. We need another couple of zeros at least here or even more. There we go. So that many zeros, I think six zeros did the trick. So this is now obviously, this is a little bit too bright, but the light did come back. So you're going to have to go and compensate. Let's divide by two, see how that fares. Yeah, we're kind of getting there. So the good thing is that you can now use this in conjunction with the luminance slider. So if you wanted to retain something of an easily adjustable value that doesn't have that quite that many zeros, and you say 500 is my target value here, then you can just go and increase this number to something much higher so that 500 makes sense in this dimmed down muted state. So let's try five additional zeros here. Yeah, there we go. Now we have it so that the luminance slider is that much up so that we can now go and make finer adjustments with the lower value here. And that's how you can compensate for that. So that's a little downside of the mesh lights, that and that they don't appear in filament. That's also a bit of a problem. Uh, but other than that, they can be helpful if you wanted to illuminate kind of flood fill things, either from the ceiling, emulate these little light squares that you can see in office buildings, or if you wanted to emulate fashion lighting, that's what ghost lights are good for. And they're really nice to either brighten up a room or give these really soft lights that are usually emitted by a softbox. In the next episode, we're going to talk about cameras, how to set them up, how to set depth of field, how to frame things up and anything and everything related to cameras. I will see you in the next episode.